And <clears throat> at this point, I should be live. Let's see if we can hear or see me. I wonder how fast this updates. This will be a good test. I think the delay time is probably about 30 seconds, maybe 20. Um, excuse me. Here we go. Um, and <clears throat> at this point, I should be live. Okay, yeah, so the delay time is pretty significant. <clears throat> AOS. Um, and let's take a look at the quality. I'm trying to stream in 4K today, and it looks like we have that option, so that's great. Um, hey, it's Charlie. Hi, Charlie. Um, all right, great. So we're live. It looks good. The stream quality seems fine. The computer is not angry at me yet, which is just always a great thing. Uh, we're building this plane today. I got it in the mail because of how mail works, and it's called the Volantex uh, Ranger 2000. So it's a two meter wingspan. I don't fly fixed wing planes. Let me get the last plane that I have flown. I'm definitely getting better. I'm improving. But this is the little park flyer that I've been flying around. It is, by the way, a, just a ton of fun. I highly recommend getting one. They're fairly cheap and they're really, really fun to fly. But they are actually a little harder than a larger plane because the response time is super, super quick. So you kind of, it really helps to have some type of stabilization system in there. So this plane is two things for me. Two, count them on your fingers. Two things. This plane does two things. Oh, uh, okay, I need to up my bit rate. Hang tight, everyone. YouTube is mad at me. How about we go from 8,000 to 10? I don't have a good sense at like what the right bit rates are. Latency um, is better than 4K. This is not 4K, says someone. Refresh it if it's not. Um, let's see. Yeah, let me refresh, make sure it's still 4K. It should be. Yeah, it is. Um, and it's a 4K stream base. I mean, if it really doesn't look good, I guess just whatever. Uh, let's see. Oh, no, this is, this is good quality. All right, I'm not playing these games. <laughs> so, um, what was I saying? This plane does two things for me. Two. Number one, I wanted I wanted a new remote control plane anyway. That's just like a fun thing that I kind of wanted to have and play around with. And this one seems like a nice little upgrade. I mean, it's definitely several times the size of the park flyer, but I just wanted something that would fly smooth and that I could fly more than 60 meters away from me. Um, and so something like this is really cool. And um, it's set up pretty well for an FPV camera, so I could fly FPV, and I, I would love to try that. But I listed that as reason one, but let's change it to reason two. Reason one is that BPS is doing uh, what I'm calling uh, Project Tropo Launch, because it's in the troposphere. Um, and it's an air-launched rocket. Now, I am unconvinced that this plane, in its current setup, will be sufficient to lift the rocket I need. Without getting into the numbers, it just seems wishful that it will be able to. But it's a huge plane, and I have faith in my ability to find more powerful motors. My approach for this is going to be, I will make this plane fly the rocket, whether it wants to or not, through the use of excessive lithium polymer batteries and considerably larger motors. Um, is that leaks, says Charlie? No, it's not leaks. This is, this is published information, because I published it on, uh, I, there's a, um, someone can drop the link in here. I think, actually, 
I think Jared just did. If anyone wants to look at the link that Jared Base just posted, um, there's a diagram of, of uh, how Launcher 1 is looking. It's a virgin orbit model. This is obviously not a 747, but... Um, yeah, we're going to build this. I, I have no idea how in-depth this will be. It looks pretty much plug-and-play. Like, it doesn't look like a hard thing to put together. <clears throat> uh, so I think we're just going to follow the ins these instructions, instructions and see how we do here. Um, now, there are a couple of things. Oh, man, we're not going to be able to do some of these things. The transmitter for this plane comes in tomorrow, but I do have... Hmm. Let's play a game. Hold on. I have two different transmitters from both of my little park flyers. They just came with it. And I might be able to get those to work, but I also do not currently have the receiver. I only have the plane, none of the electronics for it. And it is up to the Amazon delivery person to get those to us before the stream ends or before I'm ready to implement them. So it says on my Amazon app here, out for delivery, out for delivery. Ooh, look, it gives me an estimate. Oh boy. It is at least two hours from when it says the estimated arrival time is. So, that's fun. Um, yeah. Uh, okay. Am I drinking a beer? No, I'm drinking... Oh man, these things are awesome. Um, yeah, Nathan is right. I will need a way to make a bigger prop not hit the body of the plane. That is a problem for Future Joe. And you know what? I'll tell you what. Future Joe is great at solving problems. He knows how to do almost everything. Uh, past Joe and current Joe rely heavily on Future Joe. This is an AHA! Sparkling water. It's uh, black cherry and coffee flavored, and it has 30 milligrams of caffeine in it, which I love. It's a super fun little treat. Let's get started. Let's get started here. This is like Legos, but that go up in the air. So I'm gonna move some of these things off, and we're just gonna follow this, follow this step by step. I am an engineer, which means I have taken an oath to never read the instructions. However, I, I think it wise, as I've never done this before, to just give the instructions a peek. How about that? Um. All right. Um. So step one. Can everyone see all right? Is this a good angle? Install the vertical tail and horizontal tail to the fuselage as shown, secured by six pieces. Okay. Let's do that. There's a lot of... There's a lot of partying going on inside this airframe. How are the position, position sensor tests going? Uh, Gil, Gil Herme? Ooh, I'm sorry about pronouncing your name wrong. They are going really well, and in fact, they are done. Um, we're geared up for another flight of Sprint in just a couple of days. The common filter is working great. It's pretty accurate. It's like really nicely accurate. Uh, I feel confident in its ability to adequately determine where Ava is and how fast it is moving. Uh, so that means it's time to do another flight test, and we'll see we'll see how that works out for me. Okay. It looks to me like this goes in here, and it looks to me oh, this is like 
pretty smart. Um, so the tail goes together first, and then you put it on the fuselage. Alright, I like that. I can get on board with it. I cut my hair today. And, uh, well... As an engineer, I value efficiency above many things. And sometimes that's not the right way to do things because in my value of efficiency, I only used the electric trimmers to cut my hair and not scissors where they would have been much more appropriate. And I also didn't have a hair guard that was long enough for what I wanted to do. So there is a beautiful little chunk out of my hair right up front where I just got a little too close. I cut it off. I said, whoops. And now it'll grow back nice and slow. Oh, it's Andy Law's birthday. Happy birthday, Andy. Wow. <laughs> Happy birthday, man. Okay, here's the prop. I'm gonna need to order more of these. I am sure I'm gonna chew that right up. So, a couple little screws. I think they're probably these ones. PA 2.6. And it looks like uh, eight and nine servo arms, 10 screws, PA 2.6. And that's just the little, little screw boys. So this is it. Look, it gives you a little screwdriver too. This is a great kit. I love this. All right, so we're gonna screw the tail together. I may regret it later, but so far this seems wonderfully easy. I don't love the screwdriver though. Ouch. Okay. Injection molded screwdriver is not bay. New rule. How about this little one? Yeah, that works. This is much better. Uh, what was the reason for you to choose this specific model? Well, if any of you on Twitter follow a gentleman by the Twitter name of Aerospace Action Bronson, his name's Tarek, or Tarek, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it exactly. I've never met him in the real world, but he has this cool, he has a couple of cool projects with uh, fixed wing aircraft. A lot of them are flying wings on his channel. Someone can find, can probably find his channel here. Um, let's take a look. I bet I can find it here. Uh, where is it? Oh, I think this is it. Here we go. Yeah, he's got a bunch of project logs. Here is his channel. Um, he recommended this to me. He's got a lot of funny videos. I really, I really like his stuff. Um, Project Log Nine is my favorite so far. So anyway, um, he recommended it to me on Twitter. I just told him what we were trying to do, what we were trying to carry, and he said he thinks this will probably do it. Um, and if we have to upgrade the motor, that's fine. If we have to push it a little bit hard as a treat, that's fine too. Um, and here's the best part. The worst thing that happens if this can't carry a rocket definitively, the worst possible outcome of this is that I get another fun plane to fly. Well, I mean, it, it does end up costing a lot more money, but I think that's the worst possible outcome is I just have a fun plane that I get to fly. So far, 
or on screwdriver number three. Mm, well, okay, hold on. Where is that screwdriver? Oh boy, F in the chat. Let me go find it. That's not good. Let me go find a different screwdriver. This is not, uh, this is going mildly well. Sean, thank you for the offer. I will let you know if, if we need that. That is good to know. Um, hey, it's TJ with I Need More I Need More Space. Okay, this is much better. All right, so, so far, I'm giving this a not an eight and a half out of 10 for instructions and just general, like, does this make sense and quality. Is that coherent enough? Oh. Yeah, eight out of 10 so far, eight and a half. These screws on the uh, horizontal stabilizer are a little hard to get in though. That's my only complaint so far. Glider planes don't need that much TWR to fly, but you need to start fast. Uh, so a rubber band might be necessary. Interesting. Where would the rubber band go? Like to start it, maybe? This plane also has no landing gear, and I, uh, because of how things be, I will need to take off with a rolling start. So I'm gonna need to build landing gear for this. There's a chance that this is just doomed from the start to not fly. Okay, we're down to an eight out of 10. We were at eight and a half and I'm downgrading it to eight out of 10 because these screws are really hard to get in here. Just go in. Okay, there we go. This is kind of working and kind of stripping the screw. Okay, is it? Yep, it's working. It's just stupid. And it's tilted. missing a lot of chat. Sorry, everyone. Hook right under the CG and catapult style rubber band launch system. Uh, well, we do have a rubber band as part of the drop system, but it's not, we're not launching the rocket. We're just dropping it. Um, and I think for, oh, you meant, you meant to launch it, right. Yeah. I would love to try and get this taking off with a rolling start. It's going to be that's going to be a lot easier for the flight computer to understand. Uh, okay. Um, have I seen Delta Space's channel? I've met him. He's cool. I like Cole. Um, yeah, I met him at Narcon. Okay, here we go. Screw number four. This is uh, not... I, I figured the best way to do this stream was just to set up a camera and not worry too much about it, and especially because it's 4K. If you really want to zoom in, like, go ahead, but I'm not going to focus too hard on, like, 
getting you those close-up details of me screwing things in, you can just imagine what it looks like, and that'll get you far enough. All right, so the vertical and horizontal stabilizers are on. That's fun. Uh, what will this plane be used for? To launch a model rocket and to have a fun time flying it. Okay. Excuse me. What next? Number two, install the hinge control horns to reserved position. Oh, like the dedicated, okay. Maybe this was translated or something. To reserved position on vertical tail and horizontal tail secured by the PB212 screws. And I would bet those are these screws here. So there's one on the horizontal stabilizer and there are, well, I guess there's kind of one on this, but it seems like you could do it on either side. Right? Is that right? Hmm. Okay. All right, one comes out the left, the other goes out the right. Got it. Understood. Thank you, Lion Craftsman. Uh, be careful with the vertical fin, they are quite fragile. Yeah, it does, it is, does not seem extremely tolerant of shaking around. All right, it looks like all of these horns are the same size. Oh, cool. I get it now. I understand. So, I get it. 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 You have a top plate and a bottom plate, right? There's this little bottom plate, and then there's a top plate. And so, you're never relying on the foam to do anything more than just be in a little bit of compression. And so these are, are these threaded? No, but they're, they're probably slightly undersized. So you thread, you like live thread them in and you just compress either side of the foam. This is cool, I like that. I mean, I'm sure, it, I'm sure this is super obvious to everyone who builds model planes, but it's not to me. I'm learning all this stuff in real time. So this guy is gonna go on the bottom and I don't know which direction he goes. They seem to do, huh, I wonder if it matters. <laughs> okay, they seem to have this one going straight edges leading, and the other one is straight edge tailing, which is fine. Oh, no, they're both straight edge leading, leading. never mind. Right? Does that sound right to everyone? Straight edge leads on these little servo horns. Um, horn hole must be exactly over control surface hinge for equal deflection. Thank you so... <laughs> Line Craftman is coming in clutch with all of this advice. Thank you so much. So yes, now it does make sense. You do straight edge forward because you want the control hinge to be like exactly... You want the control... You want the control attachment point to be at the actuation point. Yes, but in plane with it. Okay. Uh, TJ asks, are you gonna use the camera mount option? There will definitely be cameras on this. I can tell you that. Joey B be running the YouTube channel, and if there aren't cameras, he's not interested. Okay, and you don't dig it into the foam, you lay it flat. Love it, love it, love it, love it. So that goes flat. I wonder if the rocket crate, no, I'm not gonna do it. I need, I need something to hold this plane a little bit better than my lap. Lap is fine for now, but 
Uh, okay, so this is going to go through here. I'm sorry, this is just going to take forever, and you're going to have to deal with it, because, uh... Well, because I've never built a model plane before. Okay, so this goes through here. And then it comes out the other side, but we need to screw it in a little bit. Just a little peep dip. Extravaganza with Joey B. Is it going in? Yes. Man, I gotta be careful. I mean, it, some of these screws are just not great quality. They need to be really easily stripped, I think. Um, there we go. Okay, this feels great. That feels great. It's like not that tight because we don't we don't really need to compress the foam at all. Um, is an Ava controlled two stage rocket possible? Yes, it is. Frankly, you could do if you have a separate TVC mechanism. You could do like a one, two, three, four staged vehicle, all yaw pitch roll the whole way. At, at that point though, you probably want to use something different. Like maybe you're gonna wanna use something built in house by whatever engineering team is building that. Yes, that's great. That feels good. And now we probably don't need all four screws. And in fact, they do not use... Do they use all four screws? Let's... Let's not and say we didn't. We're not gonna use all four screws yet. Let's just get these on and then we'll go from there and see how many screws they gave us. Two is certainly enough, four is better, but let's just get these attached first. And then if we have extra screws at the end, we'll go back and add them. But I'm not, Sure. They only show screwing two screws in out of the four that you could in the instructions. You know what? You know what? Saga of the screwdrivers. Oh, blessed be. Yes, this is what I wanted. Thank goodness. Okay, this is like the appropriate size screwdriver. Thank you, everyone. We're on number four now. Do I plan on doing multi-stage rockets in the future? Uh, yeah, I don't have specific plans for it right now. I have nothing against it, but a lot of the things that I... I guess you could count air launch as two-stage. I think they do that with Pegasus. They count it as like stage two or something. I don't know.
And Falcon Heavy was technically multi-stage, although it is also debatable whether it really worked. Oh, I've missed some super chats. <laughs> Joe Wakefield says, when the OnlyFans drop in. And then Eric Spittle, I believe, gave a super chat before, but I forgot to shout him out. Thank you so much, Eric. He says, watching Joey B and playing with a laser engraver. Ooh, nice. Protect your eyes. Thank you, Sean. <laughs> you, know, you know what? Every time I say it, it has to get higher. That's the rule. Okay, we've got our little control actuation points. We've got uh, a little bit of yaw control there. That's fun as a treat. Install the push rod, 115 millimeters, to the servo on each side of the fuselage through the third hole connect. Hey, I use the third hole. In Signal R2 instructions, it says count one, two, three holes from the center and attach there. Uh, count it from the servo arm edge. Yeah, this is exactly how I do it. That's so cool. Uh, through the third hole counted from the servo arm edge. Um, screwed, secured, yeah, this is absolutely translated. Past tense, secured servo arm to servo with a screw. All right, let's do it. So, we've got these bad boys and these bad boys. And this one, is, this guy's just like poking out the edge of the bag there. <laughs> who disliked who knows man uh, thank you Eric Eric ordered laser goggles so he is good thank you Ian that's very nice <laughs> thank you Ian that's a very nice thing to say <laughs> oh boy that is the price I pay for being on the internet Okay, so this one is shorter. Oh, awesome, yeah, and they like cut them to length. I also love this. I love the like screw tolerance tightening thing. Um, okay, now. Here's a question that I have. This is probably a 180 degree servo. Oh yeah, they've already like pre-drilled all of the holes. And they say, wait a minute, is this correct? I mean, it's all like ratios and stuff, but like, this is really correct. One of them is really widened out, and it's not the third hole, it's the fourth. Okay, it is a 180 degree servo. I'm gonna put it roughly in the middle. And then attach it there. Ooh, you know what? I probably wanna go up with that, right? Well, first, yeah, let's do this which is where it connects to. Oh, yeah, no, this is it. This is right. Got it. Right? Doesn't that just go through there? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh-oh. Uh, am I in trouble? Might be in trouble. Okay, we're good. We're good. I attached the wrong end because of who I am as a person. Nice, there we go. And then, does it want us to go all the way at the end of the thing and the guy? Secure the clevis to the hinge control horn by the second hole counted from the horn edge. Can you show it to me? Okay, there we go. They want the second hole. I like the third hole, but they want the second hole, so. Hate that. Hate that a lot. Hate that I said it. Okay.
And then do I snap it in? It seems kind of like I snap it in. Yeah, I definitely do that, right? I secure the clevis. Tightened by the rubber ring. I must snap it in. Yeah, awesome, it just snaps. So then, this goes here, roughly straight, and then we can trim it. And now we just have to screw this in. Okay, you know what? I'm super glad I streamed this. It really, when it comes out of the box, it looks like it's not a lot of work. And now, I get to hang out with everyone here. Because it's not, I mean, it, I still don't think it's a lot of work, but it's like, fun little build project now. Here we go. Pretty cool. Pretty, pretty, pretty cool. Uh-oh, did it want us to go inside? Eh, it's, it's fine, it's gonna end up... It's fine. <sighs> There's a lot of... There's a, yes, my clevis is secure, thank you, TJ. Um... Don't screw in the servo horn until you turn it on so that it centers first and then you can set it to negative. So, Line Craftman, I did just screw it in, but I, I found the limits. I found like the hard stops on the servo and then I went to the center. So it shouldn't, even if it goes all the way, actually, and because of the bend, even if it goes all the way, uh, it does not seem like it will hurt the stabilizer. Cool. You know what, man? I gotta redo this. This is wrong. Shoot. I just want it, I don't want it to come out the top of the servo. Oh, no, yes I do, never mind. I'm leaving it, I'm leaving it. No one tell me to not do it, I'm leaving it. Okay, next up. That's on the uh, yaw stabilizer. That's on the yaw control. Now it never... Do I do it for both ones? Each servo, each side of the fuselage. Secure the clevis to the hinge. Oh, it, it shows it, doesn't it? Okay, it wants us to do them both. It would be surprising if it were like, just do one side and then forget about it. And I would bet they want the second hole again, so I'll just do that and not check the instructions about it. How about that? Catch me outside! Okay, there's one edge. There's two edge. So that is actually, I pretty much, pretty much shot it down the middle there, so let's take that off. Put this on. Can I do this the other way? Let's let's play a game. The game is called Can I? The best part about live streaming is that I, I genuinely like this is not much different from regular life for me. I oh what the it's not much different from regular life for me. I talk to myself about this much. And just like regular life, there's no one else here with me, so I just talk to myself. Okay, this, this works a thousand billion percent better. So we're, we're switching the other one. I, I think it's worth doing. Yeah, I think it's worth doing. And I'm gonna do it. First, we're gonna screw this in. 
If I've missed things, my deepest apologies. I am cry. Okay. The only thing that I want to do on the other side is that the push rod, I'll show you. The push rod goes out from the horn instead of in, and it just has a little less straightness to it. If you do it in, man, you really, I, I just am not gonna be able to show you this. If you do it in, the push rod goes straight down the airframe, and if you do it on the outside, it sort of cants at an angle, and I don't want that. It's, it's unneeded stress in the system. It's probably almost not worth changing, except for the part where I'm just building it now, so why not change it? What the heck, guys? Can we not? There. Bingo. Yes. Perfect. That looks great. Now I'll screw it in, and I feel a lot better about it now. Cool. All right, let's see what chat I missed. Anchovy knowledge, when is the test flight? For this, excuse me. Certainly within a week. And then I'll start doing small test carries of payloads. I will probably also do a stream where I try to build some landing gear for this, or I'll just, I don't know, make it out of some wire. Um, what do you think about Elon Musk giving you a free ride to Mars on the Starship? I will tell him, send someone else, please. I love the idea that people will get to go to Mars, and I, even more than that, love the idea that it's not me. I love Earth, and I'm staying here. Uh, what do you think of a TV sy TVC system on an H or an I motor? I think get it right on the lower scale first before you scale up. Um, it's going to be more expensive and more dangerous, uh, and you can learn the exact same concepts at the small scale. And I think it's a great place to get started. Usually, apart from uh, coal from Delta Space System's first flight, usually your first flight is pretty wiggly, so I, I wouldn't try it with an HPR motor first. Have I ever used ArduPilot? Thanks for the videos. Thank you, Martian Lemon. Lemon. Um, I have not used ArduPilot yet. I played around with uh, Q ground control and something else a while ago, but I've never used it before. I have a Pixhawk coming in the mail tomorrow or maybe today, um, but uh, I'm about to use it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Don't bother with the landing gear just laying in the grass, it's just an extra mess. The problem, line craftsman, the problem with that is that if I am to actually carry a vehicle on here, let me show you. Hold on. You know what? Ah. Okay. This is not indicative of the actual vehicle, but it is the same uh, diameter. Under the left wing of this craft, Wings attached there. Oh, oh, you know what? It's really close, man. It's really close, but I, I still I still think I'm gonna need gear, landing gear. Under the left wing of the craft will be the rocket. And we have to plan for even if I were to launch it by hand, I have to plan for the possibility that the rocket does not launch on a flight, or we have an abort or something, 
and I need to be able to land with the rocket on board. And we're going to do a bunch of captive carry tests too, so um, I need to make sure that clears the ground. We've tried to, to mitigate that, so the rocket, the whole vehicle, the control surfaces are all rotated 45 degrees so that uh, we have as much ground clearance as, clearance as possible. Um, but uh, I do think we need landing gear. Even if it's just like crappy little wheels on a tiny little, you know, 1.2 millimeter wire. Okay, next. Next, step five and six. Oh, this is for the Ranger 1600, but I have the 2000. Slot the two wing connecting rods to one wing, then connect the other wing, then connect <laughs> another wing through the holes of the fuselage. I love this manual, man. Manuel who? Let's, um, let's, let's play a new game. This new game is called uh, If You Clean As You Go, Your Life Becomes Better. Uh, what vehicle is going to be launched, sprint, thump, or something secret at Joey B from Techfin in the BPS Discord? Techfin, um, I am launching a model of the Virgin Orbit Launcher 1. Um, I wish I had it here. I think I'm probably going to have a close to final version for testing pretty soon. Parker, the BPS intern, is working real hard and doing a great job on the model. We're pretty much done. The fin actuation looks really good. Um, surprisingly solid for how we have it set up. Uh, avionics mount is done. Parachutes, I think, are done. Parker was texting me about that yesterday. If he's in the chat, Parker, if you want to share where you're at. Um, but, yeah, I mean, uh, so we're going to do a Launcher 1 model. It's pretty small. I want to spec the plane to carry 800 grams, but... I don't think the vehicle will be that heavy. I think it'll end up being a decent amount lighter than that, but I want the capability. Thank you, AMG Wagon. Are you go are you doing okay on funds? I can't imagine that YouTube provides very much money, and I really want to see you go further because you're very capable. I am extremely grateful to be in a situation where I feel comfortable like spending money on new projects. And although the YouTube ad revenue is like never something to count on, it's it's really it's fine. Um, I'll I'll be all right. But I'm just really grateful that I'm in that that I get to build these models. I I'm sorry, I don't know how to answer the question. The answer is I'm I'm doing all right. Um, and you know the super chats help, but it's it's I am doing all right. Um, man, I have no idea how to answer that question. <laughs> Thank you for the super chat, though. Um, yeah. Although I, I, I will say, um, yesterday, uh, no, the night before, I think I made more, I, I, I like simultaneously bought parts for like two or three different projects and it was a little bit dizzying of like, oh no, like maybe I have taken on too much. Uh, but I, I, it's, it's fine. BPS has funds in the bank and if it didn't, that would be a different conversation. Um, all right, there's a lot of spamming going on. There's a lot of spamming. Wow. If you spam in this chat, let me get real clear with you. You can. You can spam the chat, but I will ban you from the channel, like permanently. Don't do it. I leave the slow mode off as an act of good faith that people who show up here will be responsible, but if you're just gonna be a jerk, I don't want you here. All right, no house tour. Sorry, Jeffrey. There are too many ways for that to not work out for me. <laughs> In terms of personal security. When will BPS ship to Europe? Um, I am 
unable to ship the signal kits to Europe, but we can get the merch set up to go to Europe. Um, right now, what I have to figure out is VAT, um, which is a surprisingly weird pain. Um, let's see. Got my FAA plastic in the mail today. Today is awesome. Congrats, Eric. Is that, do you mean a, like a, like an FAA card or did you get a license? All right, wing boy going on. This thing is huge. This is a big, this is half of the wing. It's about a meter tall. Here's the center core of the Falcon Heavy, which is about a meter tall. And that tracks. That's about right. Okay, that goes in there. I believe this goes in here. Yep. Do the little spars here. It's on the to-do list. It is indeed, Jared. Jared has been incredibly patient with me as I drag my feet through the mud time after time on the merch. Um, oh, remote pilot cert. Oh, cool, Eric. You and me both, although I think mine is expired now. Um, I gotta be careful, this is 4K. <laughs> Hold on. Here it is, UAS, United States of America. Uh, remote pilot, yeah. I got mine a, a, a long time ago and I never renewed it. But that was when I was doing weddings, and to do it commercially, you have to keep it above board. Um, but I, I, I think it's lapsed by now. Here we go. I'm pretty sure it was set to expire in like 2018. <laughs> Uh, okay, Parker says, the motor mount is screwed in and drilling holes now. Awesome, Parker. So Parker's drilling holes through the airframe of the rocket that's going to launch from this plane, hopefully, um, as I build the plane itself. This has been the best part about having Parker on as an intern. I can get one thing done, and then at the end of the day, more than one thing gets done. Because there's two people working. All right, uh, here we go. Uh, yes, thank you for, thank you to the folks who volunteered to become a mod. If we don't make you a mod, I promise it is not something personal or something you did. It is just that usually we have enough mods and should we not, have enough mods at some point we will change that but okay slot the two wing connecting rods through one wing then connect another wing to the holes folks I am become worry because this plane is about to get really like a big old pain in the buttocks to handle Okay, I think it snaps in. Is that the case? If I push, will I regret it? Unclear. I think this is right. Oh! Go in! Oh! Yes! Can I get an S in the chat, please? The wing is on, and it's locked. This thing is huge. I'm still not convinced it can carry 800 grams. But it, it can't not carry nothing. Oh no, hold on, it can't. It can not not carry something. Oof, I, I don't know. You know what I'm trying to say, though. <laughs> okay, now comes the point where I get a little bit worried for the existence of my seltzer over there and uh, whether it will be knocked off the table by one of these wings.
Okay. Thank you for the S's in the chat, everyone. Much appreciated. Oh, no. <laughs> what about the NAS? The NAS is... I'm afraid, I'm afraid the plane has eaten up the NAS budget. Because I wasn't going to build my own plane for this. I was going to use someone... Excuse me. I was going to use someone else as the pilot and the owner of the plane. And then several things transpired. Uh, and I thought more about... Do I want to risk anyone else's equipment for this? And do I want to rely on anyone else's schedule for this? And the answer to both of those questions is no. There's a solid chance that something goes pretty wrong here and the plane then becomes an at-risk object and I would rather destroy my own plane so much more than I would <laughs> if I destroyed someone else's. So that felt like a worthwhile investment. Um, all right. Wow, there's a lot of people watching this. Smash that MF like button. Smash that smash scribe button. Here we go. Wing number two. What's behind wing number two? That's not a thing. That's that's nothing. What do you think this is? Is this steel? I don't think it's aluminum. Maybe it is aluminum. Maybe it's aluminum. I think it might be aluminum. I don't know. I kind of like this little lock-in system. Um, and hopefully... Oh, man. All right, yeah, this might be a pain to hook up in the field. We'll see. I'm not connecting any of the servos right now. And that's probably fine. Let's get this other wing on here. Get in there, buddy. Oh! That's a good, that's a good noise, by the way. Look at this monster. This thing is huge. Now I gotta figure out how I wanna get the guy here. <laughs> Thank you, Jared. Uh, Joe, do you have a BEC if you have six servos on the plane? Yes, I do. Uh, FPV Kern now. I do have a BEC. Um, that actually arrives tomorrow, though. Uh, so I might have to... Uh, like, I don't think I can power up the plane today. We can build it, though, and there's plenty to build. And tomorrow, if you want, I can probably stream the rest of it and then trying to set Pixhawk up and everything. I'm going to move this light in a little bit just to get things looking a little bit nicer with the daylight now. How's that? How does that look? That looks pretty good. This is a good quality image. Okay, instructions. I connected the wings. Secure the wings to the fuselage with the click and plug plastic pieces. Make sure you hear a click sound to secure well. I did that. Install the hinge control horns to the reserved position on the main wings secured by four pieces. I think they do want four screws. Um, yeah, secured by four pieces of the PB212 screws. Then install the push rods to the servo. Oh, and they're tiny, tiny push rods. Servo on each main wing through the third hole connected from the servo arm edge secured by those. Secure the clevis. Okay, so they just chunked all of these things into one. It's like no steps. It's pretty much... 
Oh, this is like it. We'll see how much further we can get without the materials. Now let me recheck. I think we have an hour until the start time of when Amazon estimates my other things get here. Oof. Oh, no, the BEC does arrive today. As well as the receiver. Oh, man, folks, I feel like we should try and drag this out a little bit. The Pixhawk doesn't arrive today, but the receiver arrives, and the BEC arrives, and the Pixhawk mount arrives, and then the Pixhawk, the radio, the PPM, and a couple other things arrive tomorrow. Huh. Three or four S battery. Uh, 4S. Uh, Joe, do you think this plane can fly in bad weather? I am not the person to ask for that. I'm so sorry that I do not have an answer for you, but I don't, I do not know. I do think it's probably a pretty solid plane. It's like huge, and I bet it's a lot of fun to fly. Um, uh, for S battery might be able to lift an 800 gram payload, but you will need to balance it, or it will be like lifting two times 800 G. So compensation being the center of G. Okay, so Alexander has a great point here. This was already part of the plan, but we will have to be really careful with where the rocket is mounted here. I really don't want to mount it all the way down here because that's going to be difficult to take off and land. Because once again, I want to be able to land with the rocket attached and I don't want to have to try and catch the plane because that's a that's a considerable considerable financial investment to rely on my ability to catch the plane. So I'd rather have it mounted really close to the CG than just trim it out and the next most important thing is where we mount it Oof. is where we mount it with regard to the center of lift on the plane as well because we want it right there so that the elevators don't have to work and we don't have to pitch up or down it just brings the rocket up so that's a uh, good thing to be aware of as they say and they do say that um, what motor do you have it on and what prop? Uh, someone can find it that it's a uh, 1400 kV motor OMA 2216s and the prop is this bad boy which is 203 by 102 8 by 4 I'm sorry I don't know the numbers it's just the stock that comes with the plane right now. I fully anticipate having to replace some of this stuff in one way or another to make it work. So we will see how that works out. All right, so let's install these control horns. This is an easy thing to do. Do they have it on the top? They have it on the bottom. I can probably somewhat safely Turn this upside down. Got to be really careful with these movements here. Because pretty much every part of this plane is like ready to break. Oh, thank Yeah, can we get a claws up? Just lots of crabs in the chat would be great. Um, <laughs> Andrew says, oh, this is for launcher one. I thought it was just for fun. Uh, yeah, so it is for Launcher 1. I'm skeptical of it working, and the worst case scenario is that then I just have a new plane to fly with. Oh, hey, check this out. Look at this. They label the CG. It's, it's, it's probably difficult to see here, but they label exactly where the center of gravity is. I don't know if they're also counting that as the center of lift. Um... But that's the center of gravity, and if they've done their homework, I mean, the, the main wing spar is on the CG. I wonder if that's where the center of lift is. 
Huh. Interesting. Let's get these horns uh, attached. So I think they're going to go straight edge first. Um, yeah, it's a total win-win situation, Andrew. It's like the worst thing that happened is I just get a fun new toy. That I I didn't really get it. I, I bought it, but like I wanted a new plane anyway. So this is two birds. Uh, okay, right. Why don't we get this on first? There's one, two, three, four. Are these flaps? What are these surfaces? This is the worst part. I don't even know what this is called. These are ailerons, and these would be flaps, right? Uh-oh, hold on. Let's see if I'm right about this. Uh, yeah, flat aileron. Flap aileron. Flap aileron. Yeah, I got it. Okay. I know how to do things. <laughs> I'm good at stuff. Yes. All right. Thank you, chat. Much appreciated. There are 300 people watching this. Where are y'all coming from, man? This channel blew up one time. Because I made one stupid mistake with a soda stream. And now everyone is here to see me build this plane. Love magnetic screwdrivers. Okay. Come on, buddy. There we go. Okay, we're still just gonna use two. Okay, hold on. Let's play this game. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ah, uh, all right. When we're done, we're gonna go back and install the last four screws over there. I only did two at a time. And four is the correct answer. Here we go. Get in there, little screw boy. Get in there. Okay. Oof. Here we go. Nice and tight. Okay. Let's get the other two. This is really fun. It's a super easy build. So much of the things that I build, I have to make my own instructions and I have to make everything from scratch. And it's really fun to build something that has instructions and it like, it's just a lot easier. Wouldn't want to do it all the time, but I like it. This is great. It's on there, and now we have control. This is kind of a weird situation. Like, you can't really bend this flap, and it doesn't bend linearly? Like, what is this? There's a hinge, 
But for it to really hinge, I would have to like cut this foam. Maybe that's part of it. Maybe they don't want you to have a lot of authority there. Who knows, man. Bro, I love that you know Russian, but let's, let's just, oh my God. Maybe let's keep it English in the chat. I have nothing against Russian, but I have no idea what's going on if it's in Russian. <laughs> Which makes it a little harder to moderate. Um, hey Joe, does it have flaps, ailerons, or flapperons? Alexander, it has ailerons here. And then on the inner part, it has what seem they're they're separate control surfaces, but they are attached in a way such that they do not hinge very well. They have maybe ten degrees plus or minus up or down ten degrees of control. And it looks like if you wanted, just with the way that they're built, if you wanted, because they're already hinged, you could cut a piece of foam out in a V and then they would fully actuate if you wanted them to. I'm not sure if that's what they want. Just move it a few times. All right. If the Russian continues, we're gonna have to implement a new rule that if you are doing a lot of Russian only, we're gonna put you in a timeout. Once again, I have no problem with people who speak the Russian language or write in it, live there, no problem with that. But we have to be able to moderate this stream. And if you can't agree to the rules of the stream, then I don't know what to tell you. Okay, here we go. Very nice. That needs to be screwed in a little bit more. Cool. They size these things really well. This is now back up. I'm, I'm back up at the building of this plane. I rate 8.5 out of 10. Yeah, like a very solid 8.5. I really hope this is what people feel like when they build Signal R2. Like that's what I'm going for when I make all those instructions. And it's so hard to tell if I do a good job at that. But when, when people build this, when people build something like this, it should feel easy to follow along with the instructions and like do the work of putting it together. I hope that's what it feels like. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I don't have rule, like, it's not, it's not, you can speak Russian, it's fine, but if you're gonna spam a bunch of Russian in the chat, I'm not, I'm not about it. Um, all right, let's do the control rods now. Yeah, push rods, sorry. Hey, how do I use these clear plastic things? Shoot, was I supposed to put those on? Maybe. Okay. 
I'm going to give you a final warning to anyone who wishes to come here just to mess with the chat. I will ban your ass permanently from the channel if you do it. So you can have your fun once and then never again. So don't do it. This is a silly stream where I build a plane. How about don't be a jerk? Crazy. Uh, all right. Where are the servo things? Ooh, this one's gonna be a little bit trickier. Oh, this is gonna be really hard. How am I supposed to attach this? Okay. This, you know what? I believe that line craftsman or whoever said it before, don't attach this to the servo rod or don't attach this to the, someone, someone suggested before that I not attach this to the servo yet. And I think that is the right call. So I'm not gonna do it. And do you think they put it? Yeah, they put it on the second one. All right, let's see. Yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ban you permanently if you're a jerk. That's the new rule. If you can't stick with the rules, this isn't about free speech. Free, free speech is about freedom from government oppression. I get to censor whoever I want on this stream. And if you if I decide that you're being a jerk based on the rules of this stream, that's it, man. I'm the decider. This is a private platform. <laughs> Joe, do you like turtles? I do like turtles. It's about the best part of the chat so far. I think turtles are lit, as the kids say. Uh, all right. Here we go. Joey for dictator. <laughs> All right, uh, so this looks great. I've got the control here. I can attach it and just see how it, how it feels, but it's very difficult to attach this. I'd love if they didn't, I kind of wish that they didn't, that the plane didn't come with the servos installed, but Say la vie. Where's my servo tester? I had a servo tester, and I know it's somewhere, but I couldn't find it. I was looking for it recently. Um, all right. Let's see if it's in the sprite box. Where's the sprite box? Because that's probably where it is. Okay. I'm just going to take a quick look in this box. I don't really think it's here. Yeah, I don't really think it's here. Oh, you know what? It could be with the signal alpha box. No.
on this wonderful green earth, there is a servo tester. Oh, jeez. And for the life of me, I cannot find where it is. This is cursed. Alright, and one more look in these drawers. And if it's not here, then we'll just give up on testing the surface. But the problem is it used to be in there. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. I can use signal. This is a great day. And I will show you why it is a great day. This signal board, if you have ever ordered signal, signal alpha, actually not signal alpha, but if you've ever ordered signal R2, your components have all been tested by this one board. Oh boy, I, I really made a mess here. Uh, your components have all been tested by this one singular board that has a little bit of servo testing sketch on it. So here we go. If I plug, oh. Ah, oh, the servos are all inside the plane. <sighs> okay, well that was all for nothing. Uh, all right. Okay, so Line Craftsman says, if you want flaps, you need to cut those out. I'm not convinced that I want flaps. We will see. Um, <laughs> thank you, Jay Hines. Joey B, House of Lannister. Uh, ooh, Rocket Nerd says, I'm going to flex my BPS merch at a rocket launch tomorrow. Nice. Uh, yeah, we gotta get more merch set up here. But, here we go. Okay, well, it's just, I'm never gonna get this to work. I just want to actuate my ailerons. Is that too much to ask? Here. Obviously, it is too much to ask. Okay, great. Well, that works good enough for me, and that's fine. Let's install stuff on the other side. Very carefully. And slowly. And with caution. I don't love letting it rest on the vertical stabilizer, but I don't have much of a better option. So this will have to be fine for now. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> ailerons control roll, flaps give extra lift. Love it. Man, I had uh, just a little too much caffeine today. Very hard to thread the needle on these screws. Okay. Then we'll put the back plate on. Is this an interesting stream? We, like, it only seems to go up in viewers. <laughs> this, this is like kind of the same numbers I would expect from a BPS stream. And if this is really something that people like, then I can do testing with uh, the Pixhawk tomorrow. Wait a minute. Did I order a GPS? Uh-oh. 
Jared Bass wants to know if we can do trivia. Jared, the answer is yes, but can we do it a special way where um, I'm I'm out of organic trivia, but if the Discord wants to find obscure facts, just mention my name in it so it pops up on the notifications. Um, oh, I do have a GPS. No, I don't. Wait, what happened? Oh, nuts. Okay, well, do it now. Whoops. I was super sure that I had one, and I totally didn't. I don't know how that happened. Um... Uh, Jared, that, that works. Yeah, Jared, we could do that. Okay, well, I guess the GPS gets here tomorrow. No, uh, Saturday. Boy, I was so sure I ordered it. Look at, let me look at this again. There's that. In the Pixhawk, it doesn't come with the GPS. It just comes with... Yeah, all right. I did this to myself. Okay, that's fine. Uh, whoops. Sorry, everyone. I promise I'll be back to work in just a second. I have to order this GPS so that we can start playing with waypoint missions on the Pixhawk. Mm, yes. All right, great. Order placed. Here's the screwdriver. Let's screw this in. Oh, and I gotta put my phone out so I can we can do trivia. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, I guess we'll do. We'll guess we'll start off here. Rocket Nerd suggested this, and I guess this is my fault. I did not specify space trivia, so our first question is not space trivia. Rocket Nerd would like to ask the chat, and he's not allowed to answer. What year did the Great Depression start? I'm gonna turn on live chat so that we know who truly did get it first. What year did the Great Depression start? And then, I think as a request from now on, let's do let's do space only trivia. Thank you, Jay Hines, the Joey P. Amazon Fund. This looks like a weird rocket. Indeed it is, Lars, indeed it is. Uh, Austin Brown wins it. First correct answer, 1929. Good job, Austin. Nice job paying attention in school. Okay, let's get some more. If someone wants to put him in general in the BPS Discord um, and just tag me, we can we can do trivia. I just need... I need someone else to supply the questions because I'm all out of good organic space trivia. And I would like it to be space. I think space is, I mean, space is technically the place. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, this needs to be screwed. Okay, here we go. Oh, all right, all right. One of them, here's a good one. Uh, oh, wait, Andy Levine may have gotten it before. I'm sorry, Andy, and I'm sorry, Austin. Andy wins with 1929. Um, 
Yep, Andy wins. All right. Here's the next one. How many people have flown into space? Thank you, Rocket Nerd, for all of these. How many people have flown into space? I've still got live chat on. I'm going to try to figure out who gets it first, but clearly I'm not doing a good job of that. So if, if someone gets it, if I get it wrong, please call me out on it. This is according to Google. How many people have flown to, to space? Take the right, the wing off to work on it. Ah, uh, I'm I'm committed to the bit now. I'm sorry, Line Craftsman. Oh, and Thomas Webb with a pretty clear win of 550, and a runner-up Andre uh, Onea Onai. I don't know how to pronounce it, with 69. 550 was the correct answer, but 69 was very close. Really good, really good effort there. <laughs> All right. This goes in here. Okay, we got another one here. What was the most recent orbital launch out of Wallops? I paused, and that's going to mess a couple of people up, and I am not sorry. <laughs> what was the most recent orbital launch out of Wallops? And I think there are several ways that you can say this that are correct, but really I'm looking for the mission name. That is mostly what I'm looking for, mission name. Someone's going to get it. Crew Dragon is wrong. Specific mission. People know that it's Antares. People know that it's Cygnus. But they don't know the specific mission. This was a good question. Nope. Not NG-11. Oh, man. There are a couple of really good ones in here. Okay, this, was, this is good. And I believe Amy Parent wins this. I gotta make sure. I, yeah, okay. Amy Parent, congratulations. NG13. Northrop Grumman 13. Right? I'm like 90% sure. Yeah. Yes. NG13. Okay, Amy Parent, congratulations. All right, please do not ask for shoutouts. And especially if you spam it, please do not do that. All right. Oh, Nathan. Nathan, this is a really hard one. Okay, I, I might come back to that. I want to do John's. John has a great one in the Discord. What was the mechanical failure of the Hubble Space Telescope that caused blurry images? And John has not provided the answer. I would request that he do, but I am about 95% sure I know what this. So what was the original mechanical failure of the Hubble Space Telescope that caused blurry images? John, I don't think you have to provide the answer. Pretty sure I know it, but... And there are a bunch of ways that you can indicate in the chat that you know this. I should be able to discern discern uh, whether you're you're hitting the nail on the head or not. Okay, I might K 
Count Alexanders. It wasn't Gyros. I, it, uh, it's not the lens. It was the mirror. So I think, and it wasn't a, a misaligned mirror. Yeah, Alexander T. Moss is going to win it. Um, it was, well, it wasn't just that it was designed in gravity. It was, it was that the mirror grinding machine was not calibrated correctly. And so Alexander T. Moss answers mirror was too curved. And I believe I'm going to count that as correct. Yeah, bad calibrating hardware. Um, so Alexander wins that one. Nice job. That's a great question. Right, they, they ground... They ground down the mirror too much or something? Yeah. And it was really close. Um... Arsenio suggests in the in the Discord, I think he says, it lost the uh, the true like grinding by like two or three millimeters, and that was enough to cause the blurry images. Um, all right, wow, good question. Let's look at a couple others. Um, oh, good one. Okay, another great one from Rocket Nerd. How many Centaur upper stages have been flown? I think it might be hard to totally count this. But if you can give me a number, how many Centaur upper stages have been flown? And I'm going to put these things on here. Can someone also tell me again, why do I need this little plastic clear thing on the, uh, on the clevis? What is that? You're doing push rods wrong. Uh, 17 is not correct. Uh-oh. Wow, a lot of guesses. Nothing there yet, Rocket Nerd. Can you confirm where you got it from? Karmalik says 245, which is what the answer is in the Discord. If someone can fact check, that would be great, because it says 245, I think. But uh, Karmalik, I think, has it. 420 is not correct. But an excellent guess. And before we do more trivia, how am I doing my push rods wrong? What would you have me do differently? Um, to adjust the length of the push is for horn to clear the push rod horn to clear the push rod line craftsman can you be a little bit more specific how does the horn need to clear the push rod? Um. It engages on the servo horn. I might have to look up some pictures. Clear. Uh, cover. Push rod. Here we go. I think this is it. No, that's not it. Control linkage. I'm 
we're just going to look up images. like a little cover. What is this? Someone is no doubt calling it out. There was an article in 2012 that had his 200 flight. Okay. A closer look at the push rod. Um, to not hit. Here, I'll show you. This is still a 4K stream, so this should be enough detail to resolve it. Um, see if you can make out what I'm talking about right there. I've got this little tiny rubber cylinder thing. Where does that go and why do I need it? That is my question for you today. hole you won't have enough movement that zoom does it go over like this oh I wonder oh it definitely goes over the clevis right yeah that locks the clevis oh Yes, okay. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I think that is a great idea, and I love it, and I'm here for it, and I support it, and I fully endorse it. We're going to continue the trivia in just one moment while I slide this little guy over the clevis so he can keep things secure. Boom! This is great. Yes, this is a good idea. Uh, yeah, it's push it so it secures the rod. Awesome. So. All right, we're going to do more trivia here. I'm sorry if I haven't uh, said your trivias. Joe Wakefield says, where is the only place where one can see Neil Armstrong's spacesuit that went to the moon? And you have to specify exactly where this thing is. The location of the suit. Perhaps the building it's in and where the building is. That is what we're looking for as an answer. The, locate, the building it's in, and where that building is. <laughs> All right, someone's gonna say it. go secure and then let's get this little guy over it it's kind of hard to get on but it does seem like a really good idea to use this because if this detaches 
then I lose full control on that wing. And that would not be great. All right, here we go. I think we have a winner. I have, as the first person to get it, Ender 436, the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. And the other close by answer is Smithsonian Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. However, I believe, I believe both are correct, but Ender is showing up first for me. The other person who shows up second for me is Ed8855 Duncan. Oh, this is a good one. Neutronium95 in the, in the BPS Discord. This is a great one. I'm going to read this. We've definitely done this before. I have definitely asked this trivia question before on, I think, a BPS stream. But, uh, um, Neutronium, I'm going to change your question just a little bit. I don't think it's the engine management computer. I think it's the flight management computer. I think it's the full flight computer. What is the name of the flight computer that caused multiple failures of the N1 moon rocket? I believe it's the flight computer, not the engine computer. I suppose I could be wrong. You know what? It could be the engine computer. I think people are going to get the answer either way. Uh, okay. This guy is going around here. This guy is going around here. Folks, we're, we are making progress no matter how much it might look like we're not. Now I need to revisit the tail section of the plane. Someone's going to get it here. What? Is no one going to get this? This is like classic Soviet space trivia. Oh my gosh. This is, I felt like a lot of people knew this. I still feel like a lot of people know this. Let me ask it again. What is the name of the flight or engine controller on the N1 moon rocket? The Soviet era N1 moon rocket, which caused multiple failures. No one's getting it, man. No one's getting it. Someone's going to have to. Oh, Linecraft Man might have it. I think I'm going to count that. Ouch. Yeah, all right. I'm counting it, Linecraft Man. You win with Cord, and you wrote it in Russian, but I'm counting it. Cord. Actually, yeah, and you got it. You got it both times. Chord system. Go to space. Also got it. Um, wow! I really thought a lot more people would do that. Connect the push rod to the lowermost hole. So it does not say to do that in here. And not that I'm trying to follow everything by the book always all the time. But I think I'm going to leave it at the. Uh, the regular hole here. And I'm gonna uh, put those little push rod, the little clevis security things. I need to put those on here and I really don't wanna unscrew the servo. So I'm just gonna thread them on and then replace them here. Um, <laughs> I don't even know why I'm here, but I do love some crafting. Man, there's a lot of people for a, a silly little plane stream. Thank you all for joining, genuinely. I think if people are interested, we can do another stream tomorrow or Saturday where I try and get the rest of the plane set up. But 
I don't have a controller for this yet. That comes tomorrow. I don't have the Pixhawk for it, which we don't need, but that also comes tomorrow. I mean, we do need it eventually, but we don't need it to like test things out. And the receiver, let's see what Amazon says. Still says out for delivery. Out for delivery. Yeah, okay, cool. So we have a couple of things that are arriving later today and we'll see if they get here. Okay, great. Now we have to do this guy here. It's kind of a tedious process. <laughs> here we go. Here's that last little piece. Oof. You know, I love it when manufacturers include extra pieces in their um, their kits and things like that. I include a decent number of extra pieces in the Signal R2 kit, but it is also tremendously satisfying when there are just the right number of pieces and it makes me feel like, awesome, there's no waste here. Um, and that is the case with this plane. Secured. This one is harder to get it on. Nice. Okay. That's great. Um, this is good news. So we've made a lot of good progress. Those were attached. Um, it says to attach the servo and screw it in. I'm not doing that quite yet. Um, okay. There's more trivia, but I want to focus on the next step, which is the propeller. Install the motor in the motor mount with four pieces. Let's flip this over very carefully. Man, this thing is just awesome. It's so big. Look at how big this plane is. This room is not really big enough for it. Um, okay, so the motor is already installed and it looks like they probably did a fine job on it. Um, it it's probably worth double checking that, but I'm not gonna do it right now. They also already installed the ESC, which is great. I wish, however, I don't know how to get easy access. Oh, does this just come off? This just comes right off. Oh, brilliant. That's brilliant. And then I can connect all these things up. Okay, cool, love it. So the motor is connected and we've got the propeller here. Oh. That was a bra moment. Nick R, my guy. That's a lot of emojis there. Let's just get a lot of crabs in the chat. Crab it up, boys. Okay. Got some propeller parts right here. All right, the propeller works like this. There's these little washers. Of which I think I need two. So it goes cap, washer, Propeller, the washer just sits right in there. Okay, yeah, that works. Washer, propeller, washer, inner diameter, 
the adapter nut, shaft adapter, oh, and the cap, uh-oh, hold on, I've dropped something. Ah. Where? Uh-oh. <laughs> I heard it drop, but now, where it be? This is another bra moment. Oh, this is, uh, well, this is not ideal. This is not ideal because, as I was just saying, they did not seem to include extra parts in this kit. So losing parts is not on my to-do list. Oh boy. I think it was a servo screw. And I've definitely got extra servos and screws, but maybe as a treat I could find whatever I dropped. Or maybe not, because I obviously can't find it right now. Well, it's gone. Into the ether. Get a broom and sweep the floor, that would be a good idea. There's a lot on the floor right now. I was hoping my eyes could just find this for me, but I'm not sure they can. All right, it's gone, it's gone forever. Forget it, everyone. That never happened. Oh, it's not a lot of room in here. <sighs> I still have all the parts I need. So the cap, this screws on there. The propeller. goes on here. Oh, wait, how do these washers work? Does this go through? That doesn't feel like it fits. Oh, ah, nuts, this is the wrong size. Okay. Okay, this is the wrong size. I'm learning as I go, folks. Learning as I go. Oh, I see how this works. Right, you pick the washer for the appropriate shaft size. I get it. Yes, I get it now. Okay. So, that goes there. Then there's a washer. Like that. Then there's a propeller. Do propellers go clockwise or counterclockwise? I guess it doesn't really matter. Well, no, sorry. Let me be clear. It absolutely does matter, but it also doesn't because I can just reverse the ESC leads. Okay. Oh, no. What the? <laughs> what the hey? Okay, it just clamps onto the motor. Boy, this is, this is sketchy, man. I guess it's fine, but like, can we not? Can we not do this right now? 
So then you screw it on. Right. Whoa. Ooh, there is no clearance there, my guy. Wow. Okay. It's a pusher. No, it totally matters which way it goes. And that's backwards. Shoot. Numbers need to face forward. Yep. That's my bad. Okay. There we go. That's what I wanted. Yeah, that's a that's a legit scoop of the air. That's the right way to do it then. Hmm, there we go. Okay, yeah. That's pushing air. Now there are stickers you can put on this. Oh, here we go. Uh, depending on the function you need, cover, the camera mount, or the can be. Right. So I think you could just use, I don't think you need that piece of foam in there. It depends on what you need, but I think you can just use this bad boy and put it over there. And that is, I mean, it's not finished, but it's somewhat finished. Um, but we do need to connect some of these servos. Up. That is necessary. How are we doing in the chat here? Um, yes. Yeah, I, I did reverse the prop now, so the prop should be okay. It does matter. <laughs> I regret saying it does not matter, because that is incorrect. This seems to be correct now. It's a pusher, and this is like the correct thing. It's, it's scooping the air and pushing it. Right. This is a huge plane. I gotta be more careful with this chair, man. Uh, all right, now what? What else do I have? Can I? I need this. Uh, I need these Amazon deliveries, man. Still out for delivery. I mean, like. I ordered these things like two days ago. It's, I can't, it's amazing that it's showing up now. So I can't complain that much. Well, what else can I do here? I've got the things that I can assemble together. The rest of it is servo testing. You know what I could do is I could take the wings off and connect those servo cables. I could do that. Boy, I really wish I could find my servo tester, though. Hmm. Ooh. Oh, man. Parker, this looks good, man. Parker just sent me an image of the, uh, the Launcher 1 model. I'm gonna, um... Real quick, I'm going to show the stream. So this is where we are at. Here's the back of the vehicle. Those are all actuating fins, and inside is all the mechanics that help the fins turn. We have, like, plus or minus 40 degrees. It's crazy. Certainly, like, we get up to the stall point of the fin. Parker, I am not... Um, I'm gonna to reply to you on the stream instead of on the text, but this is awesome. Um, all right. Let's think real hard. Where 
would the servo tester be? Would it be with the Lycos? I don't think it would. Ah, jeez. If I were a servo tester, I would be in this box, and yet it's not there. Yeah, it's not there. Let me just do a little bit more searching here. And like, you know, if we can't find it, we can't find it, so be it, but. I don't see it there. It's not in here. It's a of FPD stuff, which is cool though. Okay, it could be over here. Here's a signal computer. Just looking for servo testers. And finding none. Here's a motor driver. There's some Teflon tape. Ah, I keep thinking I'm seeing it and then I don't. Here's a mission patch. in the servos box. I kind of think not. No, and I'm right. It's not in here. Ah oh, man, that would have been that would have been great though. <laughs> that would have been amazing. There's a lot of servos in here. Look at all this mess. Okay, hold on. I'm not done yet. There are other places I can check, and it's really, a, it would be very valuable to have this. I'm not done yet. Got it! Boom! Servo tester. Oh. I want to listen to that back. This one does not have caffeine. This is blueberry pomegranate. Papa bless. Okay. Oof. Let's test these servos, boys. First things first, I am the realist. But also, let's get these wings off of here. 
Take those wings, get them off of there. <laughs> what am I quoting? Uh, who, what show am I quoting when I say, take those wings, get them off of there. Take the, take the wings off, get them off of there. What show is that? First person to get it right gets nothing, but they just get it right. Oh, this is a pain in the butt to get off. Oh, Ethan Hofferman got it. Parks and Rec. <laughs> you buy a G8 jet or whatever it is, G4, G3. You buy a jet. Take the wings, get them off. Take them off. Get them off of there. You rent it out, people could leave inside their own private jet. Hey, boys, how do I get this wing off? Real talk. How do I get this wing off? Do I have to do them both? Maybe this one just comes off way easier. Oh, it does. There it is. That's the... That's the ticket. So... Here's the thing. There's one output here. Oh, jeez, this is crazy. Okay, I've got... All these cables. And there's a couple of things to look at here. So this is, what the heck is this? How is it combined into two cables? What even is this? Oh, that must be flaps. Okay. And then HCH, channel four. Okay, I'm getting it. Here's the motor cable. What is this? Oh, that's the nose? I don't know. The motor cable is here. Oh, this is a pain in the buttocks. Take the wheels, get them off of there. All right, that's the motor. Or that goes to the ESC. That's the power to the ESC. This is probably the ESC PWM. Okay, we're gonna figure this out, folks. I'm gonna make this happen. Yeah, it's John Ralphio. Uh, all right. Pomegranate time. Flaps are connected with a Y cable. Cable. Linecraftman, you are the real MVP here. Everything so far so far has been immensely helpful that you've said in this chat. Yeah, so the Y cable is the flaps because they don't really need to do attitude control. They just need to um, provide more or less lift. Let me get a battery. Whoops. Mm. 
I may not have the correct cables for this. Take the wings, get them off of there. Oh, you know what I do have is a taser. That's not really helpful for this, though. Shoot. I don't think I have the right polarity. Ah, what a bummer. I don't think I have the right polarity for what I'm trying to do here. I have these XT, what is it, XT60s? Yeah. They are the wrong polarity. They're like, why do I have a taser? Excuse me. It was for Sprite and it was for the ignition circuit inside of the taser. Although that is not a great idea and I do not recommend doing it. All right, let's get more batteries, hold on. These are all from the Sprite program, and you don't want to hurt the LiPos, so it's best to, to, to lower their voltage over time. Um, all right. <laughs> Michael Reeves. This is a 4S, right? 14.8 volts, that's 4S, is it not? Yeah, that's 4S, 3S is 11, <clears throat> 2S is 7. This is a 2S, and it has three cables. This is a 4S and it has five cables. Right, got it, okay, I'm good. Um, if, I plug, if I plug the 4S into the motor, do you think I can just try it as a treat? How about, how about it? What is the worst thing that could happen? Nothing. No smoke, no problems. But it's not gonna actuate the motor. There's nothing on the other end of the motor. Now, alternatively, is this a bad idea? It is possible that this is a bad idea. Okay, 7.7 7 volts. Hmm. Let's try this on a servo first. why they thread everything through like this. Like, this is so confusing and difficult to navigate. I think what we need to do is play a little game of what the heck. Let's try any one of these and just see how that works out for us. Whoa! Hey! How about it? Nice, okay, so that is channel 
three, and then I would guess that maybe channel four is the yaw control. It's the vertical stabilizer. Yep, that's that. These are pretty strong. Okay, now I don't think, okay, so these are the flaps, but these aren't gonna work because they're not plugged in. So now what I bet we can do is figure out how to get these working. Like are the flaps here? Is this for the flaps? I kind of hate how this is set up here. Like I feel like the the cable management here could be, roughly speaking, one thousand times better. So we're gonna go down from an eight point five out of ten on this plane to an eight. Okay, I can't even get that to really fit. Um. Okay, let's get these wings off. Get them off of there. the way to do it, man. You use the rod to push the other wing out. Awesome. Okay. These come out. And this makes everything about a billion, million, jillion times easier. So, what is this? This is two, channel two, and this is channel Shoot, two. Those are both channel two. So I'm gonna guess that these tiny short ones, oh, there we go, this is much easier. This is channel three. I think channel two is maybe flaps. I'm sure everyone who knows this stuff already is like screaming in the comments that they know the answer. But let's try that. And let's just get a servo to test it with. Okay, so here's a servo. Awesome. And so this is channel two. Right? And then there's two other cables in here, but they are very hard to get. Uh, and I wish they were easier. Wait a minute, these kind of like go pretty Far? Do they are they supposed to go all the way into the plane? Oh, they included these. These are the ailerons. These are for the ailerons. I am now understand. No, they're not. Why is this split? <laughs> Wait. Are the ailerons one set? 
Oh, what? What if it's reversed? I would be really surprised about that. Hold on. Oh my god! That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. The ailerons are one channel. Right? Is that true? The ailerons are one channel. Huh. I would have thought they would have made it two channels. Ethan Hefferman says, Y cable and servo reverser. But Ethan, the, the most genius thing here is that the servos are already reversed. Because of how they're mounted in the wings, on one wing, the servo directions match, and on the other, they oppose each other. So naturally, the servos, when you actuate the ailerons, one will go in one direction, one will go the other. And again, because of how they're set up, you only need two channels to control it. Okay, and that means it's even more important that you dial in where the center point is. I think that's just going to be a day of trimming, basically, where the center point is manually by twisting this little cable. Okay, yeah, I can do this. Um, wow, you know what? I... I, uh, I kind of love that. That's just super, like, you know, what's the fewest channels that we can get away with? I kind of love that. Huh. Sound isn't synced up with video. Rut row. How bad is it? I kind of love that. All right, I gotta figure this out. That's just super like, you know, what's the fewest channels that we can get away with? I kind of love that. It, it might just huh. be a little off. Sound isn't synced up with video. Rut row. Oh, it's close enough. Yeah, that's fine. Close enough. All right. Um, excuse me. Uh, Parker has more things to send. Oh, man. All right, get ready. There's more cool stuff. This is really neat. So here are the fins for the Launcher 1 model. I'll bring them over here. Here we go. How do I make this work? My goodness. Okay, here are the fins. Okay. And then these are probably fins actuating within the frame. Very nice. Parker, this looks great, man. Okay. So now that I know this, I'm going to do a little bit of labeling so that it's really, really clear exactly what the F is going on with all of these cables. No TBC. Yep, it's fin control, no TBC at all. The motor is locked in place for the Launcher 1 model. It is all fin control. Um, uh, where do you work? I bet you work at NASA or something. Well, that is quite the compliment, but I work at my house, actually. So this is a full-time job, not the plane, but uh, BPS.Space is the model rocketry company that I run. And we make rocketry products, we make fun videos and fun projects, and 
uh, I get to somehow remarkably do it as my job. And in order to keep doing it as my job, um, I need to get the gaff tape on the other side of the room. My job is at stake. I love gaff tape. Um, can I get some votes? I want to label these. Maybe I'll just use blue tape. I'll just use blue tape. Screw it. Blue tape is going to be easier to see. Um, it'll be higher contrast with the Sharpie than silver Sharpie on gaff tape. So we're going to coat, we're going to cover. Um, all of these. This is channel two. What I'm doing now is I'm covering all of the servo outputs just so it's easier for me to use a Sharpie on them. And I'm going to write the letters F and A for flaps and ailerons. So these are the flaps. This is pretty easy. I just know that if I'm in the field and I'm going to, just because of the size of my car, I'm going to have to travel with these wings off of the plane. Um, when I get to the field, I want it to be real easy for me to read where all of the things go. Um, what stage are you on in this build? I'm in the labeling all of the things so that everything looks really nice stage. Um, okay. One ailerons, two elevator, three throttle, four rudder, five flaps. Um, <laughs> warm weather gaff or cold weather gaff? I don't know, honestly. It just is ga It just is gaff tape, generic gaff tape. Um, all right, here we go. So F on this, and it doesn't matter because it's the same signal. So I'm just going to write F on one side, F on the other really clearly. And F on this side. And F on the other. I'm sure people may have preferences for, I rather, you know, like maybe you label your channels as channel one, two, three, four, but I'd rather label it so that it sort of makes sense with what the servos are controlling. So flaps, ailerons. Um, Okay, it's a pretty clean rip. I'm, I'll be honest, folks, I'll be honest. I am trying to delay the stream, not necessarily because I want to stream forever, but because there's an Amazon package on the way with lots of cool goodies that we can put into the plane, and then the stream can like usefully continue going. Right now, this is not that exciting, but ideally, in a short period of time, we will have new things to play with that arrive in the mail. Okay, here's one piece of tape and two. Arsenio says, damn, he not using low battery mode. What do you mean? Oh, like on my phone? Oh, low latency mode. Yeah, no, I am, I, it's high latency because it's a 4K stream. Okay, F and then A for ailerons. A. A, 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 O. Okay, awesome. V, 
these are my ailerons. And then somehow I'm going to have to thread this through here. I don't know why they didn't like include this. Oh, you know what? It's probably because they didn't know if you wanted to use the flaps. So they probably did this for the same exact reason that they did um, that they don't cut out the thing that lets the flap move very well. Because they're not sure that you want to use the flaps. And honestly, neither am I. Like, same, lol. Uh, okay. So I've got those in there, and now I could reconnect the wings and try the servo on there. Let's try it. Let's connect to... Ooh, I know what we're going to do. Let's label these little servos. Technically, I think you could probably do it by the length of the cable. So this is probably the flap. Maybe this is the aileron. Let's make sure of that. Oof, these are really tight connectors. Also, I need to label the end of this thing. It's a lot of labeling. But it will pay off. Okay, so this is A for ailerons. And then A. And then I can put that into the servo tester. And see how it works. Whoops, that's backwards. Yikes. Oh, wait, is this? Okay, hold on. Okay, that's roughly center. So now we can use this to finally attach this thing, because we didn't do that before. There it is. Hey, that's pretty cool. Oh man, I'm just plunging right into the foam. Okay, well there's some alignment to do. But that works, and that's definitely the aileron, and that's the most important part for me right now. Which means I can then take this and properly label that cable. So A always goes to A. Again, this is like really overkill, but it's about, at least for me, it's about making sure that when I'm really stressed out at the launch site, this isn't a thing I can easily mess up, right? If there's labels and I can just follow the trail of A, 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 all the way down, then that means I can pretty much shut off my brain or anyone who has no clue how this works could set it up. So here's another A for aileron, because that's what it's connected to. And then I'm going to have to add another servo cable in here. Luckily I have plenty of extras, but I'm going to have to add another servo cable. Um, because on the left wing, which actually is this, this is the left wing here, um, right around here somewhere there's a uh, there's going to be a drop mechanism for the rocket. And I'm going to have to design however that goes in there. We're not really sure yet. All right. 
it is possible to take out the servo and screw in the horn. Is it really? It seems like it's glued in there. I don't doubt you, but it does seem like it's glued in there pretty well. Um, yeah. Why not use Sharpies and duct tape to eliminate the need for a label maker? Wait, no, that's what I am doing. I'm using Sharp, I'm, well, I'm using uh, blue tape, painter's tape, but close enough. Okay, AA, now let's label the flap. That's another easy one. Okay, this is a little too thick with two C's. Okay. Welcome back to the stream, everyone. Today we're watching a man use a Sharpie on some tape. Thanks so much for joining. Okay, F for flap. And F for flap. Okay, the left wing is labeled, which is great. Um, let's check the Amazon situation. Checking on the Amazon. Oh, oh no, never mind. Ooh, see where your package is on the map. It's 10 stops away right now. It's coming. Folks, the package is is on its way. It's 10 stops away. It's 10 stops away. It's almost here. Now it's nine stops away. Oh man, folks. This is well-timed. This is what we call in the, uh, in the business a well-timed live stream. Um, can I hear your, <laughs> Devin Jacob says, can I hear your best airplane impression? Impression, Absolutely. Why did so many people dislike this? My goodness. <laughs> That's my best airplane impression. Okay, and this is the flaps. Right. Okay. So the flaps need to get labeled. Joey B tape ASMR. Hey guys, welcome back to Joey B ASMR, where today I'm doing flaps. Okay, that's A. Here's F. That's not a very good F label, but whatever. Okay, that's F. I got Sharpie all over my hand. Ooh, and now I want to label the horizontal and vertical stabilizers in a way that makes sense to me, not just like channel three, channel four. So this is uh, H-O-R, horizontal, no, this is, yeah. It's the 
horizontal stabilizer, and that's the vertical stabilizer. Yeah. <laughs> that's channel three. There's a solid chance I'll rename these later, but I just do not have the like nomenclature or whatever you want to call it, the knowledge of inherently which channel is which. Okay, let me double check. This is channel three. Okay, things are cleaning up, folks. It, they're starting to make a lot more sense, and I love it. I'm here for it. I'm all about it. H. O. R. That's for the horizontal stabilizer. And one more time, right here. H. O R. Okay, coming right along. Why are you doing this, LOL? Well, I'll tell you what, Bjorn. I've got to do it either way. I've got to build this plane either way. And I've got a camera and an internet connection. And so why not stream it? <laughs> That's about... That's about the entire reasoning there. I'm going to label the ESC cable as well. That seems overkill, but... I think let's just go all the way with this and label everything that I could possibly get confused with something else. This is for... E S C Same thing here E S C All right, we have just a couple more things to do. This is the vertical stabilizer. Let me confirm that. Oh, that's backwards. Yep. So now we have to label that. It's a lot of labeling here today. Excuse me. stabilizer V E R. Ah, uh, you know what I should have done is done rudder and elevator, but it's too late. It's too late. <laughs> it's too late. Throttle, aileron, elevator, rudder. Yep, I didn't do elevator and I didn't do rudder. I did four for the elevator and ver for the rudder. 
They do reference the correct, like, surfaces, but they don't use the correct name. That's fine. All right. Uh, someone wants to know if I cut my hair again, and the answer is uh, undisclosed. And the happiness that I have after cutting my hair, and the happiness that I did, the contentness that I did with the job that I did on cutting my hair is low. I am not that content with the job that I did. I got a little too confident, and I believe I am paying for it now. And that's all I'll say. Okay, now where is the servo for, ah, here it is. Okay, so this is the ESC as well, so we're going to label that. Oh, jeez, okay, hold on. Nice. All right. It's getting really, really well labeled in there. <laughs> it's getting very well labeled in there. Um, and things are looking good now. ESPN. Huh. <laughs> the Sports Network. That is great. Okay, so... Is it a terrible idea? <sighs> okay. I'm going to try something. I'm going to hold on to the plane while I do it. And that's that. doing this right now. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. That's all I needed to know. So the ESC works. Um, I don't know how it does. It's uh... wow that I thought that spun better. Maybe it's because there's current in there. That could be it. Um... Take off prop. All right. That is that is a very good idea. Thank you. Remove prop and add tape to it. Love this. Both really good ideas. Okay, now I can see the rotation direction. Let's do it again. Here we go, ESC goes in here. What do these beeps mean? What do we think? I feel like you want to start at high throttle, right?
try this again. There it is. So that's a good startup because it counted the number of cells. Okay. All right. All right. Let's let's keep trying this. Oh, this is the settings mode. Hold on. This is crazy. <laughs> Four. Oh. Feels like it didn't like that. Try it again. Huh, that's interesting that it doesn't get past that. Throttle up, then down and hold. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so it needs to set the throttle limits. Okay. You know what? We're not going to do this right now. I trust that the motor works. We're not going to do this right now. Um, I'm going to do it when I get the receiver and I think the end and the pickhawk and I think that's going to be much better. Um, okay. Now what? Uh, how's my Amazon order? Is it here yet? It, it's got to be pretty close. Right? Out for delivery. Let's see if we can track it. Oh, it's six stops away. Okay, well, folks, I've been drinking seltzer all day, so the stream is not over by any means, but I do have to go to the bathroom really bad. And when I come back, we're going to find out something else that I can do. I don't know what yet, but put suggestions in the comments. What else can I do with this situation right here? I've labeled the cables. Maybe I could route them a little bit better. This doesn't work super well for finding out how well the motor works, but let's, let's not worry about it right now. Um, yeah, put your suggestions in the comment for what I should do. And I have to go pee so badly right now. I will be right back.
We back, and I have a receiver. Uh-oh, hold on. Oh, you can see me. Hold on. Wait, I have a problem. I need a new battery for the screen. Wait, one sec. Hold on. There we go. Turn the screen on. <clears throat> okay. Yes. Hello, everyone. We're back. And I need some advice. So, what did we get in the mail? A couple, a couple of things. We have a couple of things in the mail. There is a radio system, 900 megahertz. And it is pretty strong. We probably didn't need to get a system that was this strong. But I have it now. So air module, ground module. This little air guy is going to let us talk to the Pixhawk, um, and that's great. It's a wonderful thing. And then this, this little ground guy uh, is going to let us talk from the Pixhawk's signal to the computer, so we can set waypoint missions and all sorts of wonderful things like that. And we do it through this radio module. So that's great, and I am going to put it right down here. And I'm definitely going to forget that it's there. That's thing number one. Thing number two, this is kind of boring. We have a, um, a flight controller isolation board. So that goes under the Pixhawk. And it keeps the vibrations on the plane from getting too bad. Do we need this on a big, beefy plane like this? Probably not. Will it maybe help a little bit? Sure. Maybe. Will it hurt? Probably not. So I'm going to opt to use it. And that is that. Um, how do I attach these things? Do they go? Are they springy? Uh, hold on. Stand by. Oh, yeah, they are springy. Okay, so they bend inward. So can you see what this is? Hopefully you can. You get these little blue guys, put them around the edge. I'm just going to build as much as I can build today. Because if I know myself, and I feel like I do, when I get enough components to fly this thing, I am going to want to fly as soon as I can. So let's just build everything I can. Okay, there's one. This is kind of a tedious process here. One, two. Bada bing. I think it's a good idea, right? Does everyone think it's a good idea? I feel like it's, it's you know, um... It feels like a good idea to add one of these things. It was what, like seven bucks or something too? Vibration is a problem on my rockets and they, you know, if there's any imbalance in that propeller, which given the price I paid for this plane, there probably is. Boom, okay. There's the bottom part. And then I attach the top part. And then you zip tie the top part around the Pix Hawk, I think. Something like that. This 
this is really hard to attach. And I kind of hate it. Uh, okay, there's one. Well, this is uh, this is maybe a little bit of a boring stream here. Get in there. There we go. Whew. Ever recover a rocket with a drone? Not yet. Yet being the key word. Seems like a lot of fun to try that. And also very hard. Oh, jeez. How am I supposed to get this in here? Okay, so that goes like up in there. And I grab it and I start to pull it through. <laughs> this thing is a nightmare. Come on. Ah! There. There we go. Man, it like doesn't... I guess it isolates really high frequency stuff. Um, <laughs> only thing better than this is the melt. Thanks, Carlos. Oh, jeez. Okay. Here we go. Yeah, there it is. Get in there. I will be happy when this is done. Said every engineer about every project. Ah! Uh, get in there! Ah! Uh. Yes! Oh, jeez. That sucks. That sucks. I hate that. That sucks. And I hate it. And it sucks. Oh. All right. Well, at least it fits. Can easily fit this on here. Great. Ha, oh, jeez. All right. Um Someone get this man some sangria. I don't have any sangria. I'm afraid to. I'm afraid to say. So this is done. Uh, can't really use it until I get the pixhawk. Don't really want to try to use it until I get the pixhawk. Now, here is a BEC a battery eliminating circuit. Oh, and before I forget, do I want to use these? It's pretty heavy. How many milliamp hours? Huh. I guess let's start with this. This is a 1300 milliamp hour. Well, this might not last long. Can someone do some flight time calculations for me? With this motor, it's a 30 amp ESC. And the motor is uh, the stock motor. So if you look up this plane at the link below, it's the stock motor. It's uh, 1,400 kilovolts. This battery is 1,300 milliamp hours. The discharge is 100 C, so we can we can really punch it. But what is my flight time with something like this? I have way beefier batteries, like three times the size, but. They're obviously heavier, and I need to buy, oh, geez, the appropriate connectors for it. So those are going to be T-slot 
connector to XT60. Yes, and it's this type. I'm just gonna get a couple of these right now because otherwise, ya boy's gonna forget. Um, here we go. And there we go, Sunday. That's fine. I can deal with that. Uh, it's not kilovolts. It's kV. Whatever. Probably want twenty two hundred. You can fly over f easy. Um, it's rated for three S. You have more current draw, right? Honestly, I don't know. This might just be an experimental thing. Um. Right, and then this goes into the Pixhawk, I think. Maybe? What does this go into? Maybe the receiver. Either way, speaking of receivers, that's the last thing I have here. A little FR Sky X8R receiver. And I believe these are the antennae at the end, these little PCB antenna. Where do I put these? Do these need to be on the outside of the craft? S bus. Huh. This is pretty cool. I like how tiny it is. Uh, no, so apparently they don't need to be on the outside. Uh, let's see. Okay, well then this can just kind of go anywhere in the in the craft, can't it? Just put it right in the little, right in the little nose there. How about it, man? You know what I would love to add is some, some nice blinking lights to this. That would be great. But I am starting to worry about our mass budget here. So that goes in there. The Pixhawk goes in there. The BEC. Honestly, I think this is pretty manageable with like a little bit of cable management. Um, but we still don't have a controller. I could try running this. Um, How do I hook up this? <laughs> so many questions. So many questions. Oh, okay. It is specifically for a Pixhawk. This makes sense. How does the receiver get powered? Hmm. I guess it's from the BEC, right? The BEC comes out of this. Right. Okay. I think I may need the Pixhawk to fly this thing and power it. Because normally it would come out of this. Except that this does not have the correct plug to go into the receiver. You probably don't need the BEC. Plugging into ESC servo cable will power the receiver. Okay. Cool. Now, 
Is it channel one for the servo? I think it's channel one, right? If I plug in this, okay, the uh, the receiver is on and blinking, so that's good. That was correct. I wonder if I can bind this receiver to um, one of my other controllers here. I mean, these are all like kind of crappy controllers. None of them are particularly good. But I think it has to be, it's all, it's all different protocol, right? So it's not, um, it's not like you can just, Built-in BEC may not handle the current from all those servos and induce noise into the motor. All right, well, let's see if this works. TRC-285, just a cheap little controller, TRC-285. And let's see if there's any chance it'll work with something from FR Sky. I don't think so. Yeah, I kind of doubt it. Right? Like, you have to have a compatible receiver and controller. Is that not correct? wonder if there's a way that we can force it to bind. Sorry, everyone. Just doing a little, not even troubleshooting here. Let's just see. Uh, all right, here we go. Guides and articles three. Is there no manual here? What radio is Joe using? Okay, well, right now, this, let me be very clear, this is not the radio I'm actually going to use. This is a top race radio, TRC-285, for the first cheap uh, model airplane that I bought. What I actually have coming in the mail is, uh, let me look. It's coming tomorrow, but I'm just seeing if I can, like, can I get anything to work today? Because maybe, maybe I can. Uh, tomorrow is the, it's the uh, FR Sky X9D, the Tyrannus X9D. And then also the Pixhawk gets here tomorrow, and the PPM, and the GPS gets here Saturday. There's a lot of things that have to show up. Yeah, that's not going to work today. Ethan Hefferman is right. I don't think that's gonna work for me today. I mean, this is great progress though. I didn't start the day with a plane and now I have a plane that like all of the servos work. We tested those. I guess we didn't test the other wing, but I'll assume. Um, and, excuse me. We've got the receiver. We've got the little BEC that powers the Pixhawk. The 
pixhawk is what is actually driving the servos. So I guess we'll want to look at that and make sure that we can drive those servos really well. I'm not sure what the voltage regulation situation is there. Uh, this cable doesn't look very thick, so I'm not, I'm not totally convinced that we can drive all the servos we need, but we'll see. Um, the motor seems to work. I think that's going to be a lot easier to troubleshoot when we have a controller. And yeah, I don't know. This is pretty good. I think this went pretty well. Yeah, Tyrannus Radio is a great starter. I think it looked pretty good. I liked that it was, it seemed to be open, as in you could update the software on it, you could mess around with the software on it. Um, I don't really intend to, but I like that. Yeah, Ethan says, if a receiver and transmitter are different protocols, it won't work whatsoever. Whatsoever, That makes sense. So the, the, the FR Sky controller is getting here tomorrow, and I might stream, I might not, we'll see. Um, yeah, it depends, I guess, how early things get here. I have a couple of calls tomorrow, too, that might get in the way. Um, but I'd love to start flying this within a week, and I'd also love to launch within a week. So later tonight, after this, when I clean all of this streaming mess up, uh, I'm going to work on Sprint some more. We're going to finalize all of this stuff with Ava. The position, velocity, the common filter looks great. It's working really well. So I'll double check all that stuff. And then I think we're probably going to try to launch... Oof. I might try for Saturday. I guess i got to see what the weather looks like. But that's the situation. And that's all I've got for, for everyone now. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, I hope this was an entertaining stream, and I think that's it, right? Is there anything else? What is the poster I've always meant to ask? Jared, this is the uh, Nexo 1 poster from 2016 from Copenhagen Suborbitals, but they sent it to me, and they said, they wrote on it, they said, uh, may your skies be blue and your winds be low, Team Copenhagen Suborbitals. But it's really cool of them to, to send that. It's a great it's a great shot too. Um, Ethan says he has the X nine D now. It's pretty cool. Okay, awesome. Um, that's great to hear that someone else likes it too. All right. Hey Trista! Wow, Trista's here. It's been a little while. It's good to see you. I'm sorry we're just leaving now. Um, all right. Well, this is it. I'm gonna clean up this room. Get my life in order. Try to launch soon. If you're a BPS patron, keep your eyes peeled for the live stream link uh, for Sprint Flight 8. If all goes well, if, that's a big if, all goes well in Flight 8, which I'm going to put my cards on the table, I think it will. I have high confidence. But if all goes well in Flight 8, that means flight nine is the 500 meter shot. And if we succeed in that, then flight 10, which is really just appropriate for this, flight 10 is the one kilometer shot. So keep your eyes peeled. We'll see how that works. All right, in typical fashion, I have rambled on for several minutes after saying I'm ending the stream. So thanks so much for joining. I'll talk to you all soon. May your skies be, nope, this is the wrong channel. Have a good night. Now I gotta end this. And I don't know how much the delay is, so I might just talk for a little while. Because I want it to keep the part where I say, have a good night at the end. Good night, good night, good night, good night, good night. Good night, good night, good night, good night. Good night, good night, good night, good night, good night, good night. Bye!